H wherever I see X. So it's going to appear two places. And there's going to be quite a bit to write down. So that's g of x plus h minus g of x. All right, before I can really, there's a few things I can cancel out. The 4 and the minus 4 are going to cancel out. But before I cancel anything else, I really need to uh, distribute and distribute and FOIL. So I need to expand all these out. So we have 5x plus 5h. Plus, when I FOIL this out, I get x squared times 5. That's 5x squared. I have xh plus xh times 5. So that's 10xh. h squared times 5. And I'm going to distribute this negative sign as well, minus 5x minus 5x squared. Now, hopefully, a lot of things are going to cancel on this line. I see minus 5x plus 5x, 5x squared minus 5x squared. Everything that doesn't cancel better have an h in it, because I'm going to end up factoring the h out to cancel in the denominator. So things without h's better cancel out here. So I'm left with 5h plus 10xh plus 5h squared, all divided by h. And finally, we factor the h out. So we have 5 plus 10x plus 5h over h. Now, finally, these h's cancel. And we just have 5 plus 10x plus 5h. So on web work, on some of the questions they ask you, they're asking you for the coefficients right there. That's just a, B, and Probably a, B, and C, or C, B, A, depending on the order. You just have to pay attention to which coefficients which. All right, next homework question. This is a good question for the midterm right here. It's not on your quiz today, but that means it could be on your midterm. Is that easy to write down? It asks for the graph, which is easy to get, but I'm talking about, I don't even know what it's asking for in the first part. All right, so we're going to look up 1.7.1 after we look at cool computers. <laughs> Apparently, Larry David and Bernie Sanders are cousins. That was funny. <laughs> if you know who they are, it's not surprising. Oh, yeah, web work. All right. All right, we have to look at transformations and decide which, let's see, sketch a graph. So if I look at the original function, it's 1 fifth n squared. We know what that looks like. It's going to be a happy parabola. What does that 1 fifth, what transformation does that 1 fifth correspond to? Vertical, and it's going to be compression by a fifth. So it will take your happy parabola and make it look kind of wide, basically, or kind of short, however you want to think about it. So we're supposed to pick, now it says sketch a graph down here, part B. These are different letters than we're used to. Normally M, we're using the letter F for function names. So that's a little bit strange. So that means the function of, now we see a plus 4. So what shift is, happens on the inside of a function? So that'll be a left right shift, and this one will go left 4. And we see a minus 7. That's another shift. And that's going to be down 7. So we're supposed to go left 4, down 7. And that's where our vertex is going to be. So we're going left and down. That looks like B right there. So it should be part B. All the other ones have different vertex points. So there's only one choice, and it's 
number B. Now part one is where I think most of you got stuck. So part one, let's look at that. I'm going to copy down the m of n equals 1 fifth n squared, and then this uh, y equals m n plus 4 minus 7. It was plus 4 minus 7. Now, if I change these letters to ones we're familiar with, so all I did was replace our function name m by f and our input n by x. So things that look a little more familiar to what we're used to. So all I need to do is carefully take x plus 4 and f it. So I'm going to plug it in wherever I see x. So that's 1 fifth x plus 4 squared minus 7. So this step is pretty easy to do. When I run back over to web work, they just want me to plug in that formula. So I'm just going to try this version right here. I may have to FOIL it, uh, but I'm going to try this version first. So don't do more work unless you absolutely have to. It's a good time to talk about answer preview. So let's say I just don't put any parentheses in. Most of us see that that's wrong. And so I'm going to hit submit answers. Oh, well, that's useful. X not defined because I should switch back to N. So this problem doesn't know what X is. So let's take care of that. So I got part B correct, but the first one, what I want to look at is answer preview. It should be really clear where I messed up You looking at the answer preview. So I can see it looks like the 4 square, but not the n plus 4. So I recommend the first thing you should check is the answer preview, what it looks like. This should be close to what you have written down. The reason I recommend check that first, that usually takes all of two seconds or so to look there, look at your paper, and realize they're not the same. So hopefully we got, yeah, that one correct. Okay, why is mine not correct? Mine is just you switch the 8 or the 4 and 7 for 8 and 3. I have it written down the same exact way you do. Me too, and it says it's wrong. Oh, not sure. You need a 2 and a 5. You can't put my answer in your problem. Are they different? Yeah, so most of, you, most of the problems that I assign have different values in them. I'll say minus 3. Oh, that's obvious. I need 1 eighth. What? You need 1 eighth. All right. There are some problems that literally are exactly the same as somebody else's problem in the class. Most of them have slightly different numbers. So if you can solve yours, if you're going to help your friend, they'll probably have to change the numbers a little bit. Some problems are literally exactly the same answers. A lot of the multiple choice ones are the same answers. All right, more homework questions? Number three. Now I also add 10% to your homework, so I don't expect you to get 100%. There's a few students every year that get 100%, but I expect you to get somewhere around 90. And then I add 10% to your total homework grade at the very end. So you don't need to get every single part of every problem right. You should be getting most parts of most problems right, somewhere about 90% or so. Oh, it's a good time to talk about uh, homework 
as that's related to your grade. Most students you're going to get within 20% of your homework score as your actual grade in the class. So if you're shooting for a A minus, which is 90 and above, then you want to get your homework score as close to 90 as you possibly can. So if your homework score is around 70 and you're hoping for an A, that's very unlikely to happen. So homework score is the only thing you can directly control. All right, how in the world are we supposed to figure out these transformations? So there's only shifts. So what we need to do is figure out how much is the graph of f on the left transformed to the graph of g on the right. So I'll try to zoom in. I won't really make those any bigger. How much is this graph going left? So you've got to pick a point on the graph. If I pick the top point, the maximum right there, I'm going to see where the, that point moves. And it looks like it's going left 3, and then it's going to go down 1. So it should be left 3, down 1. How does that look right here? So I'm going to go left 3. So I know it's supposed to look like this, minus h plus k. So I'm going to go left 3. So that would go 3 to the right. It's really the opposite sign that makes sense. And then down 1, minus 1. So that should be all we need to take one graph to the other. Oh, better answer this. We said left 3, down 4, down 1. Questions? Um, 1.5 problem 3. 1.5 3. Alright, so average rate of change. This last one's going to be a little extra tricky because we have weird coordinates. So we got minus 7x minus 8. Here is the, uh, the average rate of change formula that I'm using, FB minus FA over B minus A. So that's our average rate of change. And the only weird thing in this problem is they said B was this X plus H, and A is just X. So we get this expression on the left. Let me just double check and make sure we got the rate minus 7 minus, minus 7X minus 8. So we're going between those two points. So first thing you notice, I got an x and a minus x. So those are going to cancel. So this is really just fx plus h minus fx over h. So when we plug in x plus h into f, our real goal is to get rid of that h in the denominator, just like it always is. So f of x plus h is minus 7, x plus h minus 8, minus regular fx, minus 7x minus 8. Make sure you subtract that whole quantity. We're going to get some cancellations, but let's expand first. So we have plus 7x plus 8. That's going to cancel. And again, just like that last difference quotient, everything that doesn't have an H should cancel out. So we should be left with H only. Oh, it turns with H only. Minus 8 plus 8. And we just have minus 7. Uh-oh. What should this term be right here? It should be a 7H. So that's what I call the spidey sense right there, if you know things, the terms remaining should all have H's in them, and then you get down and there's a 7x, then something probably went wrong. 
So we got minus 7h over h cancels to minus 7. So we can graph this function very easily. What type of graph would this function have, this f of x function? Linear. It's linear, so it'll be a line. Intercept negative 8, y-intercept negative 8, slope negative 7. So a really fast graph is going to look something like this right here. And it turns out on a, li a linear function on a line, no matter what two points you pick, you're always going to compute the same slope. So right away, the average rate of change on a linear function is always going to be the same number. So in this case, it'll always be negative 7. Probably time to start your quiz.